I'm on a mission to get every single Final Fantasy XIV PS5 trophy in two years. It's day 13 and after completing Heavensward, it's on to the next expansion is what I would say, but I want to get the White Mage quests done ASAP because I'm already level 70 so I can do them all. But turns out I actually have to do the first Stormblood MSQ first, I guess. Not to either gets a new fit and won't I stop talking. Ooh, fancy title screen. Anyway, I complete the entire White Mage questline, which takes place in the first area of the entire expansion and get this awesome new attire. It does look good, doesn't it? Okay, back to the story though, and it's time to take on Greenwatt and his magical exploding mechs. Shortly after that, I hit level 72 and my stone and arrow just magically changed into glare and deer. I'm just gonna say it, it's great that deer is making a comeback into the Final Fantasy series, but I won't really get to use these spells and duties because I'll be level locked at 70 max. The Empire are understandably upset that I'm here and after slicing through the rabble, this budget Sephiroth appears and absolutely rips me a new one. Oh, we are so screwed. But hopefully we'll never see him again in this expansion. But that's tomorrow's problem. Day 14 and it's time for the first dungeon of the expansion in the form of the Siren Song C. Try saying that five times fast. First up, it's whatever the hell this is supposed to be. The trick seemed to be be melee range at all times to make dodging and managing enemy mechanics as easy as possible. Makes sense. Next up, sad boy with his dark puddles of despair. It was pretty easy to avoid them, not gonna lie, because they were quite highly telegraphed and no one embarrassed themselves here. And finally, it's the first member of the Elite Four, Lorelei. But instead of a battle against her ice Pokemon, it seems to be a dance contest, specifically the Hokey Koki. I just position myself in the right place and direction so I'm not hurt when it's time to walk or run away. And we have no problems taking her down. She really should have brought Dugong. That's enough Alamigo liberation for now. Did I mention that we're liberating Alamigo? No, well, plot's not important. And the gang hit Doma because we are liberating two places at once in this expansion. I proceed to get a bit lost because of course I do. The gang get betrayed because this is a Final Fantasy game. I do my best solid snake impression thanks to the action button which is going to be very important for a duty later on. And our new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle friend saves the day. It's just after this that I hit level 74 and have access to the Blood Lily. But again, the cap for duties is 70. So this isn't really relevant. This is in the script to remind me whilst I'm playing Shadowbringers. I do some villagers chores for them because this is Final Fantasy 14 and go on a long swim. And in celebration of the Euros and Copper America, I learned how to dive. I just realized that that joke's gonna not really land because this will come out two weeks after the finals. Whatever. I slaughter an endangered species and then it's time for the Pool of Tribute, the first primal of the run. And Susano is an absolute chat. There's lots of sword cleaving, lots of electric shenanigans, corridors of safety and stacking mechanics, all tried and true ways to try and screw us over. The big man temporarily mega evolves and our tanks thankfully pass their brain check and after some more electric shenanigans at hand, Susano does indeed go down. It's time for the first why is this in this expansion mechanic in the form of the sniping minigames. Why is this in an MMORPG? Is it to break up the gameplay? If I wanted to snipe things, I'd queue into a Call of Duty lobby. Anyway, after some sniper no sniping, it's time for the Evil Empire Bad Guy rematch. And part two, honestly, goes as well as part one. I.e. I get my ass handed to me by Budget Sephiroth. As punishment, I pick up Malbrushet and then head into Bardem's Metal. After going door to door quicker than a double glazing window salesman, again, very niche reference, it's time to take on Grula and his animal friends. For some ungodly reason, he kept wanting to charge at me and not the other party members, but fortunately the sheep absorbed the damage for me and Grula went down pretty quickly. Next up, 
another round of Dance Dance Revolution Final Fantasy XIV Edition. I actually failed the second trial because I got sandwiched between two other players. That's my fault, not theirs. Luckily, though, the final trial went a lot more smoothly and we could move on to the Big Bird on steroids. This boss has a stair mechanic and as is tradition in this channel, I failed it miserably and nearly got punished in the process. Luckily for me though, that is the toughest part of the fight and it eventually squawks its last, well, squawk. I do some chores for the locals again. Wow, that's a new one. And as is another tradition in Final Fantasy XIV apparently, I kill the native population and then convince the rest of the natives to unite against the Empire. Now, I'm sure there'll be some original material in this video at some point. Speaking of original material, it's time for Doma Castle. Haha. <laughs> time to liberate Doma Castle for the first time in eight Final Fantasies. This starts with a huge initial pull from the tank into the first boss. But honestly, the pull was harder. It's just a fancy light show, really, with no real threat. The tank started feeling really good about themselves and decided to wall to wall to the second boss and it nearly went perfectly. There was only one death and I'm sure I could have prevented that if I was really trying hard enough. The second boss is just like the first. Don't stand in the glowy lines, avoid the boss's AoEs and stand in the pillar so we don't wipe. And then finally... Oh, look how they've massacred my boy. Luckily for us, he's not that tough, which seems to be a recurring theme for this dungeon, as his mechanics that require more than two brain cells come later, but we slice through him before he gets that far into his script. Alright, one liberation down, one to go. There's a battle on a big bridge that's sorely lacking a certain four-armed chap and his green companion. I take down another useless general of the Empire. They're either dog water or uber busted and there appears to be no in-between. And then it's time for emanation. That's right, it's been a while, but it's time for another primal. And unusually for a primal, this starts with the ads. And then from there, it's all about using drill on the action button to avoid getting one shot either from sipping or from being yeeted off a cliff. I actually liked the action button mechanic in this fight and I wish there was more of them, but I guess they're saving those for the next expansion, right? There's also cross AoEs and healer AoEs, which are really awkward as well, especially when they're cast together later on. But Lakshmi does eventually go down and that's the end of that, right? We're never gonna see her again, right? Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's talk about Castrum Abania. Oh look, it's the Magitek factory from Final Fantasy VI. After a lot of Magitek, it's time for the first boss, Magnaroda. Isn't this one supposed to come at the end? He's not hard, the cannons are inconvenient, more than a threat, and we move on. Just like the boss in Final Fantasy VI. We kill some science experiments, and then it's time for this, who, as I'm writing the script, I can't remember the name of. It's actually a really interesting fight. I think this one got updated recently. I'm not entirely sure. The different elements have different mechanics and it keeps the party on our toes. That one was fun, but the dungeon unfortunately peaks there. The last boss is a joke and not really worth commenting on. At the end though, I got Art of War 3. I go on a manhunt through some salt flats and then do another solid snake impression and merc this general for the second time in two fights. Then I commit animal abuse in the name of righteousness. I will not make a furry joke. And that's the end of day 14. Day 15 and it's time to attempt to liberate Alamigo once and for all. And I run into my first roleplay character, the tank. Honestly, they stayed in character the entire time and seem to be having the time of their lives. So fair play, they were awesome. First up is a uh, budget Scorpion Sentinel. Two super dodgeable abilities here, a slow tracking AOE that I definitely didn't get hit by, and the tail laser. Then it's a uh, budget Hojo. Out of body experience was a pretty cool mini game, I'm not gonna lie, but he had the HP of a housefly and he went down pretty quickly. And then budget Sephiroth round three. Lots of glowing, lots of swords, lots of damage. My MP management was pretty atrocious in this fight. So when someone died, I thought I couldn't raise them. 
and I uh, completely forgot that thin air is a thing and uh, I won't be making that mistake again, let me tell you that. Anyway, after all that, Budget Sephiroth goes down once and for all. <laughs> nope, just kidding, it's time for the Royal Menagerie. Wait, wait, is that 2B from Near Automata? Shinryu is here, the first mechanic sees uh, three people wipe straight off the bat because they forgot that you can fall off this platform and uh, you also better believe that this is going to be a recurring theme. Chunyu then switches between all the other primals for his abilities and he loves knocking people about like there's no tomorrow. It was going okay despite all of this. Myself and the other healer were doing really well keeping health up or having to res others and on one occasion each other as the health bars just kept plummeting to zero. Eventually though, I made one misstep too many and the healer had to whip out the limit break three to come in clutch and Shinryu finally, finally fell down. Also, active time maneuver is a super dumb mechanic. I hate it. And that's the end of Stormblood, or is it? You think we're done there? Oh no, we've got to set up the next expansion first. And we're straight into another dungeon, the drowned city of Scala. After nearly dying on the first pull due to brain lag, Kelpie is the first boss with push and pull mechanics not too dissimilar to Lorelei of the Siren Song C. Next up is uh, this clay doll who's so laughably easy, it's barely worth bringing up. The Springer mechanic though is kind of cool. And then finally it's, uh, I think that's the King of Eblon from Final Fantasy IV. Now, a lot of his moves are prompts instead of casts, which took a while to get used to. A lot of the mechanics are similar to Lakshmi though, as well as a stair mechanic, because of course there is. And I failed it, because of course I did. The King of Eblon does eventually go down though, and after a quick detour to the Gold Saucer and spending far too long looking for this guy's jaw, oh look, Lakshmi's back. Hooray. With the rest of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, whoever they are, I defeat her and her holy balls and unlock the legend returns. 3.2 is very short. I go on a rescue mission and explode a bunch of Imperial Magitech and I defeat the alternate dimension heroes in a half shell for the Rise of a New Sun trophy. After that, I got a new fit that I actually love and after 33 minutes of waiting, it's time to take on Tsukiyomi and the Castrum Fluminus. Yes, that's right, it's finally time to take down the Moon Lady. Phase 1 starts with a chandelier into a cone that bamboozles everyone. Luckily, the healers and the tanks are there to see everyone through it. Phase 2 is 50% ad killing and 50% listening to the primal whine about how hard her life is. And then Phase 3 is just like Phase 1 with that half and half mechanic from Angramain New way back in the Crystal Tower. Man, I missed that. I just have to switch between the two so I don't die too fast. And eventually, through a ton of damage, the Wicked Witch of the East does indeed go down. And the Under the Moonlight trophy belongs to me. Then it's time to play as Alphano. Why? Why would I want to play as Alphano? I want to play as myself. I don't want to play as anyone else. If I wanted to play as someone else, I'd make a new character. Anyway, rant aside, it's time to feel the burn. The first boss is this scorpion and his four stalagmite friends, except they're our friends, really. It's very similar to the Fenrir fight in A Realm Reborn's Snow Cloak, if you remember that one. The next boss suffers from what I'm going to call second boss syndrome in this video, too little HP to be a real threat. And then finally, Mist Dragon. Similar to the Final Fantasy IV counterpart, lots of mist-based attacks and a form that I shouldn't attack. I, I said I shouldn't attack. Uh, apart from that, this guy is pretty easy. I 1v1 this blue horny lady and win, repeatedly. I then have to play as Ishtola Ugh. and take down red horny man. There's even an active time maneuver. This duty is garbage. Anyway, that's the end of that one and I get prelude in Violet. All right, it's time to wrap this one up. The Gimlet Dark is honestly one long corridor, so I'm gonna call this Final Fantasy 13: The Dungeon. First boss is yet another Magitek Colossus because wow, originality. But this one has a new rotating mechanic. It's cool, but why are they introducing it now? That's super puzzling to me. 
Second is Prometheus from Final Fantasy XIII, I think. And honestly, as long as you don't stare at the glowing wall and stand still, you'll be fine. And finally, the Chuckle Brothers. Sisters. Whatever. On their own, they're super easy. Together, they have this one move that can kill you. But again, as long as you don't walk directly into it, you shouldn't have a problem. Yes, I'm a moron. Luckily, the other two members of the party who did have their brains switched on pulled through for us, and I get a Requiem for Heroes Part 1. Then I play as Yasuo from League of Legends, except I don't have to hit the 10 death power spike to be useful. And then it's time for the fourth match with Budget Sephiroth. I defeat him pretty handily though, leveling the series at 2-2. And I'm sure there will be a fifth fight really soon. No, Shinryu doesn't count. That won't be today though, and I get a Requiem for Heroes Part 2, and that's the end of Stormblood. For real. It's time to head to what some would say is the best expansion in the entire game, but that, my friends, is a story for another day.